I played against Messi. That's the biggest one against him, obviously. What Salah? Were you there when Salah was there? I left that summer, so I trained with him for like three weeks. I learned the tools through working with some of the best coaches, the best mentors that I've been blessed to have throughout my yeah. career. Like Jurgen Klopp, yeah? Yeah, Klopp. <laughs> even people outside of football, bro. Like mm -hmm. someone will go online and say you're shit and make players feel like they're shit. Like mm -hmm. they never make me feel shit, but they used to just piss me off for the fact that they're trying to make me feel shit. That's what used to get on my nerves. Most of the time, it's your own fans. All the time, it's your own fans. Yeah, so it's like 95% like, of it is your own fans. So it's like if you want to support the team surely yeah. you should be uplifting bro them. don't expect any logic from the football fans bro they're all <laughs> stupid as fuck bro like 90% of them if someone said some shit and that uh, hated on me but didn't tag me I'll be like cool he's just saying his opinion yeah, but yeah. he's purposely at my name bro so I could see it how do you reckon people get like leaks do you reckon it's the players that bro do you know what it is it's all the nerds that work upstairs bro the amount of times I'd have to go home just broken about a disappointment it's like you develop or fall out the game and I was too obsessed to fall out the game What's going on, my people? Welcome back to Cashflow Convos. Today we're here in Dubai with ex Liverpool player Kevin. How you doing, brother? Good, bro. Good, bro. Thanks for having me on. Very different as well, bro. On the balcony, <laughs> 30, like, it's like 35 degrees. Yeah, First day, yeah, everything, yeah. bro. It's too hot, bro. But yeah, tell me, man, how you been, man? Everything's been good. Everything's been good. I've been out here, what, nine months now? Mm. So um, I've like fully understood Dubai, got a grip of it, seen, seen what it has to offer. And it's good, bro. I'm having a break. We're going back to the UK. Uh, literally like in like two days to have a bit of break from the heat bro the heat's crazy like, yeah. it's, it's different bro. i've never felt heat like this before but all is good man enjoying it bro enjoying decent, it decent bro so yeah let's get straight into it man 100%. Uh, for the people who don't know tell us a bit about yourself and what you do yeah so well my main thing that i'm known for is is football mm. you know I've, I've been a professional footballer for the last like 15 years yeah and um as i recently just retired and moved to dubai i was actually going to play out here but uh, it didn't quite work out. The, the vibe out here just didn't really, it didn't really appeal to me football-wise. Um, so I've gone into coaching, bro. I've gone into coaching. I've got a fitness and mindset program that I run now where, you know, I help people overcome a lot of internal issues. Things that I've overcome throughout my career, everything mm -hmm. that I struggled with, I've like overcome, learned the tools through working with some of the best coaches, the best mentors that I've been blessed to have throughout my yeah. career. Like Jurgen Klopp, yeah? Yeah, Klopp. <laughs> Even people outside of football, bro. So yeah, many yeah. people outside of football as well. Football was very, very hard to like, to yeah. break through, to achieve things. So it just naturally made you have to overcome a lot of things. So yeah. you had to go searching for answers a lot, how to overcome, you know, self-doubt, how to gain more confidence to be able to play in front of however many fans every single week and, um, and be present in that moment. So it takes you know a lot of internal work a lot of self-development and um you know I, I overcome all of it so that's what i teach now so i teach other people to do it applies across all areas whether you're you know an mm. entrepreneur business owner you you work for someone and you're just career driven really yeah so that's why i help bro. i help people get onto more of a positive path become better versions of this, better versions of themselves be stronger physically mentally mm. all of it bro definitely man what makes you want to do that though because Obviously, you were a professional footballer. What what like got you into self improvement and self development? Fo football got me into self development. Football mm. was like, like I said, bro, it breaks you so many times. It, it breaks you into pieces over and over again. Um, I mean, a lot of people's careers are different. Some are harder than others. Mine was like very tough. I came across a lot of uh, adversity, a lot of roadblocks. So it just naturally, right? If I, if I was so obsessed to become a professional footballer, I just wanted to be the best footballer I could always be. And when you're that obsessed and so many things get put in, in your way, you either give up or you go to self-development and yeah. you you improve mentally to then overcome the obstacles. Because that's it, when you're that obsessed, there's only one way to do it, bro. You either overcome the, the, the problem and get what you want or literally just quit. And I could never quit, bro, because my obsession would have just ate me alive, bro. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, that's how I got into self-development. I was just like continuously trying to overcome fear overcome self-doubt, all the all the problems that the majority of people have. So uh, that's that's how I got into it, bro. And I've I done it from a very young age. I was like into self-development when I was like 10, bro. Mm. I, can, I can think back that far of like, fuck, why do I feel like this? How do I overcome this? So were you doing that during your career as well? So let's say, obviously, there must be that mental aspect of football as well, where you constantly feel like you might be pressured into like playing on a good performance all the time. So sometimes when you don't perform as well as you do, is there some sort of aspect where you thought like I need to improve myself mentally and so I can so I can take on this pressure and you know handle this a bit more? Yeah, bro, I, I understood from a very young age that life and the game of football is like totally mental. Mm -hmm. Like you get a certain level of skill, but the, the the margins of people in skill that aren't footballers and that are footballers, like 
from like League Two to Prem, isn't that that big of a difference, bro? It's margins. It's more about mindset. It's more about people's ability to deal with stress. More about them to their their um their ability to just handle highly stressed situations, bro. How to let things go as well and not dwell on bad performances. Those are the main things, the main separators from from a lot of people, bro. From a lot of footballers, for sure. Yeah. So I I knew it was a self development game. I knew I was like. Skills wise, I was as skilled as majority of people, but it was going to come down to who had the best mindset. And I surpassed a lot of people that are more talented than me, but just yeah. weren't strong enough mentally and they couldn't handle the pressure. Handle the pressure. So I feel like at Liverpool, you the spotlight's on you like a bit more, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. a massive club, so it must be like even a big, bigger pressure. Yeah, bro, that's tough. Not a lot of people can can play, bro, at, mm. uh, at big clubs because, like you said, bro, instead of when you're playing a match, there's sixty thousand fans as opposed to five. Mm. Yeah. And then, not only is there fifty thousand people in the stands, but then there's also watching ten you. million people watching it, yeah, bro. And tweeting, micro analyzing your you. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've done bro. this, you've done that. Even sometimes, probably your own fans are probably like thinking. Oh, majority from from, the, from your own fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's bro, like everything is just it's just self development. Like mm. this is, but this isn't just specific to football. This is everything. This is business. This is entrepreneurship. It's Definitely. parenting. It's everything. Is self development. So mm. that's why it's, it's so important, bro. That everyone needs to partake in that. And I know how important it was to me, so I know how important it is to other people. So that's why that's why that's why I do what I do. That's why I coach. Yeah. Well, what made you retire early in football? You get into like self, uh, a few a few factors, bro. It was like I, I was injured for like two years. Yeah. I got I got I got some bad injuries, like reoccurring injuries, and um, that was that was really tough. So in a way, I had to start like detaching from football because each time I kept getting injured, I was like, bro, this could be it. So I had to start preparing myself for it just in case that was a, a was a possibility. So I actually ended up overcoming the injuries and I got back playing. But football's very unforgiving. So when you're out for that long, like it's so competitive, bro. There's new players coming in every time. So the position that it put me in would have just put me back too far and I'd have to rebuild it again. And I've already done this about 10 times already. So, and the kind of person I am, I started feeling like a bit of a slave to the game, bro. Like, other clubs just trying to pull my pants down like financially because they know I've been injured. They know I had no power. Mm. And then I'd have to just drag my family to like another city constantly and move them from where they've settled. And I just thought, bro, fuck that. I don't need this, bro. And I was like, I knew I had big plans that I could do in business. That's one thing that I'm very fortunate with. Like a lot of people that play football, they, they only have football. So when things don't go their way in football and they have to just take anything whatsoever just to like get paid, then that's just what they have to do. Or that's what they feel like they have to do. But I always knew I had more. I always knew I had a lot to offer away from football. So I just thought, look, I'm, I'm 30 years old. My days are numbered in football. I'm probably capped from where, how far I can, I can go in the next five years. Because once you're 30, bro, you know, like you're like a granddad, bro, really, yeah. in football. I think yeah. we were speaking about, was we speaking about the other day? Yeah, the other day, yeah. But in business, you're like young, bro. So I feel like I have no cap in business and in, and in just life and entrepreneurship. But in football, I felt mega capped. So I was like, where should I put, where does, where does it make more sense to put all my, all my resources? So I went with this one, bro. So what are you doing now? Self-development for people, yeah? Online coaching, yeah? So. Yeah, on, online coaching, fitness and mindset, a fitness package and a self-development package. Fitness is obviously just guys that just need to get in shape. Like, you know, they're, mm. that's just the, the main problem that they have and they just need to get in shape. Whereas a lot of other people have a lot more challenging problems. Maybe they're out of shape and they have um, a lot of internal issues that they need to face. Maybe they want to get over drinking and they can't. Just there's a bunch of problems, bro. Loads of different ones yeah. that, I, that I see every single day. Yeah, so, so how important do you think that is? Like actual fitness and health and stuff like that, bro. Fitness is so huge, bro. Like it's mm. it's, it's massive. I, I was I I did a post the other day. I said if you just get in shape, that will like solve ninety percent of your problems. Ninety mm. percent. Like if 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 someone's you know if someone's problem is you no know, they lack confidence, you get in shape, you have more confidence. If someone's problem is you know, uh, maybe they're getting into a lot of arguments like with their, with their missus and they're not seeing eye to eye and you spend more time away in the gym just building yourself up mentally, you have more clarity and then you're, you're less short-tempered. That would probably solve that problem. Like it just solves so many problems. So the first thing that I, that I do for anyone that comes on is like fitness. How, are you fit? How do you feel about yourself? What's your, what's your daily routine like? How are you eating? All that is, is a massive, it's a, makes a huge impact on someone's mind, bro. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's how I know it's, it's like, Extremely important. Yeah, you've seen uh, Andy Elliott as always. Like, um, I love that guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's, that like, he's like, he's like, 
I'm gonna fight everyone that doesn't have a six pack. Yeah, yeah. You've seen yeah. the video. Yeah, yeah. That, right. I, I rate that, bro. He's coming to Dubai, you know. Is he? In November. Yeah, I'm gonna meet him in Dubai. Um, I've got a ticket to like one of his one of his events, which is gonna be good, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, he's someone that I watch the most. He's yeah. like one of my favorite right now. Yeah. For sure. But he he knows the importance, bro. I think that was a huge part of his story. Mm. He was like wasn't happy with where he was at. He was out of shape, he got in shape, and that was a major like catalyst for him to then go on to do what he's doing now. Yeah. So what about nutrition as well? Do you think that plays an important role as well? Bro, I, 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 I'm very self, I'm very self-aware and I'm always like, I'm very self-reflective. So everything I do, I pay attention to how it makes me feel and how it makes me react. So I probably maybe know this more than others, but I can really tell the effect that foods have on me and my mood mm. and my energy on a daily basis. Most people don't, maybe because I'm, because I've been a professional footballer as well for such a long time. Yeah. I need to eat in order to perform. So I really, I'm really aware of how foods make me feel. Because if a food makes me feel shit, then my performance is going to be shit and I'm going to have less energy when I play. Yeah. So I've always had to be super aware of how it makes me feel. Most people I feel like are quite oblivious to it, but they could feel like a complete different person if they just changed their nutrition and what they eat. It's energy, bro. Food's energy. We're energy. Whatever energy you put into your body is what, is what you're going to get and how you're going to feel. So that, that's, that's a huge part, bro. Like people come into my program that think they think they eat healthy. But then I look into the diet, bro, and everything has sugar in it. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you have no idea. And then like that, take sugar out or change a specific, a specific thing that they're eating and switch it for something healthier and everything changes. Yeah, I feel like it, it helps you mentally as well 100%. in terms of concentration, you know, sleeping, stuff like that. So yeah, I feel yeah. like it's not just in terms of fitness, nutrition helps with like a lot of other things. Definitely. My, mm. Mindset for sure, 100%. Mm. How have you built the um, business mindset over the, over the few years, like after football? Bro, it started, it started like in lockdown. Yeah. Bro, I, there was one time, bro, it was in lockdown. And I remember just kept getting, you know what it's like in the UK, bro, you just get bare fines for your letterbox yeah. like all the time. <laughs> I just kept getting hit with fines, like speeding fines, uh, parking fines, like everything. And I just remember I was in the living room with my, with my wife, right? And I was just getting pissed. And I was like, bro, I need to, they already taxed me too much. Yeah. And as well, then I'm getting all these fines, bro. I was just like super pissed. So I was like, there must be a way for me to get this money back. Like I, I'm gonna start learning about tax. Mm. Just randomly started learning about tax. And then I went into that and I was watching loads of YouTube videos about how to just reclaim tax, just basics. And um, then I came across property. I came across a lot of property investors. And then that that sparked an interest. So I started learning about property. And then I just like started networking and just like immersing myself in business, reaching out to people in the DMs, meeting people, having phone calls. And um, then I started getting loads of loads of property. Uh, opportunities and yeah. then I dove delve into uh, into property bro and I started like developing buildings right from the ground up and then from there just spurred from there bro then I was just like started meeting other entrepreneurs other business owners bro and it just took on from there and I started getting really interested and also the mentors that that had mindset uh, programs online that helped me overcome a lot of issues I was having internally whether it's like me being injured me performing they I that struck struck my interest in terms of like having a coaching business. So that's yeah. how that that's how that works. So you spoke about properties. Do you have properties in Dubai as well? No, 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 just UK. Oh, it's UK. So yeah, you do UK. properties there. Yeah, yeah. So I got I got a student accommodation in Birmingham. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that that I did like just coming out of lockdown. So that was yeah. interesting. That was like my first initial introduction to business. Okay. Yeah, yeah bro. So that was a uh, property. Probably I always be involved in property to some degree for sure. Yeah. Well, what any other businesses? You got any other businesses apart from like coaching online and fitness? Uh, I have some investments in like startups, but I don't get involved in like at all. I don't even know what's going on. So yeah, so just invested initially and then just like took a back step. Yeah, so. um, but now, bro, I, I, yeah, bro, right now I only just do like what I'm what I'm really interested in. Like even yeah. the property side of things is running quite smooth. I have a partner that deals with it. Okay. I'm just really invested in coaching. That's what like I, I like the most. So mm. I feel like my purpose is, and it's why it's what I'm good at, bro. So I just lean into into what I'm good at. Yeah, yeah that's decent, man. So what would you say are the three main characteristics to make someone successful in business? Bro, like, I, I, I'm probably not even, um, I'm probably not even qualified to say that yet, to be honest, bro, because I, I need to still prove myself in business. Mm. I don't deem property as business, to, mm. to really. Like, I, I've, I've been successful in that. I've made, you know, I've made seven figures in property. Yeah. But I highly leveraged my partner. He was, he's a very clever guy. He was experienced in property. So, I mean, I, I know, I know what it, I know what it takes because mm. I've had so many mentors, I've studied so many people, I've studied so many successful people, but I need to 
make it happen first before I really go yeah. out there and say, this is how you be successful in business. But yeah. it's obvious, bro, that, that the, the mindset's key, how you operate on a daily basis. This, this is, so this is what I focus on now. I focus on daily habits that's gonna move the needle forward in my business every single day. Mm. So firstly, I need to know what's the right actions to take, what's gonna move me closer to where I need to be. And for that, I just pay for a mentor that's already done what I wanna achieve. He will tell me exactly the steps I need to take. Yeah. And then I use all my raw qualities that I have of discipline, of courage, of confidence to then make sure that I never miss in those habits every single day. And if yeah. I do that every single day, I don't see how, how I could fail, bro. Yeah, so let's change the question then. So let's say, so what are the three main characteristics someone should have to be a successful individual, like overall? Successful individual. I think courage is huge. Mm. Because to be successful, it means you've got to do hard things. And if you don't have the courage to, to make yourself and force yourself to do that, then you're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. Like there's the amount of people that have ideas, the amount of people that want to start a podcast, but they don't have the courage to jump on a podcast and speak. Courage is huge. That's massive. Like nothing would have happened if I don't, if I didn't have courage. Courage is like the catalyst to doing anything difficult and anything that's, that's valuable, mm -hmm. anything that's worth achieving is going to be difficult. So if you don't have courage, I think you're fucked. So courage is definitely um, number one. Uh, knowledge, you obviously have to have, to have knowledge, right? You're not yeah. going to be able to achieve anything without knowledge. So acquire the knowledge. And I think that mainly for me comes through people. So you need to find someone who has that knowledge. Like you can save yourself years upon years by just paying to, paying to play, paying someone to teach you how to do it. Who took, who took It took them years to figure it out. So just leverage them. So I think leverage is important. So courage, knowledge, and then consistency, bro. Mm -hmm. having having that level of self-mastery to make yourself do all the mundane things you have to do on a daily basis like even like running a podcast bro the amount you've got to set up these mics where it's the most boring shit ever <laughs> but you've got you have to do it you just got right? to be done in it you got it's got to be done and um it's just all the basic stuff in business that's just annoying bro like in a coaching business what is it like there, there's so many times in a day where i don't want to speak on camera mm -hmm. like i'm naturally an introvert i don't like speaking but i have to put myself in that in that mode every single day to give people value that I have inside my mind that they're gonna need. And that's also gonna push the business forward. It's gonna show what I know, it's gonna just give social proof of how I've overcome what I've overcome. So I have to do that. So if I don't have the consistency, bro, then I'm not gonna move forward. Definitely, man. Uh, where would you see yourself in five years? In five years? Bro, I don't, I don't see- goals? Yeah, I don't see myself doing that much different to what I do now, bro. I think my, yeah. daily, my daily life looks very similar. Like yeah. it doesn't really change. I think, I just coach more people. I think my brand is just bigger. I think my message is stronger. More people know about it. Um, I would have impacted a lot of people in five years. Yeah. Yeah. I think just, yeah, I think just like expanding what I'm doing now, but I, on a day to day, bro, I don't think much has changed. Would you do yeah. live events? Do I do live events? Bro, I, I like, so I've done a few, a few talks out here in Dubai. Hmm. And the only reason I do it, one is because they're a little bit scary. And I make myself do scary stuff. That's the only way I'm going to grow. I want to get even better at speaking and speaking in front of crowds and being able to impact people mm. as I speak. So that's why I did it. But in terms of live events, the reason why I don't like them to the green, I don't know whether I'll continue doing them for the long run is because bro, there's only so much impact you can make in one hour, like at one event. But it builds so, that mm, personal interaction. Isn't it? Yeah, it, customs, yeah isn't it? it does, but I'm just like, I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to speak for an hour. People are going to get motivated. Then when they leave, they're going to go back to their normal lives. <laughs> that if I teach people and I want to spend time sharing what I know, it needs to be over a longer period of time. That's why my mm -hmm. coaching is like, you know, you sign up for three months, six months, a year. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be consistent be because they're going to, I'm going to tell them something. They're going to go away. It's not going to quite make sense. I know how I like to learn. And I know yeah. if someone really interested speaks and it speaks to me, I now have a hundred questions. Yeah. So now I'm gonna that, that guy's gonna leave with 100 questions and he's not gonna know how to, how, to, how to move forward. So everything I do, bro, I like to just have like that consistency and just be constantly available to someone. Yeah. So yeah, maybe look, bro, they can even obviously see me at a live event and follow me on Insta and, and then go from there. But yeah, I don't know, bro. That, I, know, I know I got told that from a guy who's got an event out here that wanted, um, that wanted another guy, I think actually Andy Elliott to speak, Andy but Elliott. he refused it for the same reason. He's like, bro, I can't do that. I just don't do that. It's not li aligned to my values because I can't impact people enough by mm -hmm. just speaking for an hour. And I get, I, I fully understood that. But yeah, I hear that. Yeah, would you ever go back to football? No, I don't think so. What about if you get the phone call from Saudi? From Saudi, bro. <laughs> it would have to be a lot of money, bro. Uh, Gerard. Would, <laughs> what uh, would Gerard uh, calls you up? Do you know what? I, bro, 
it, I could if I could align it to what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like I, God would, God, I think God would actually punish me if I if I went back to football yeah. and put this to the side because I feel like that's why I finished football in the in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Like I was supposed to, I was supposed to do this. Like He was breaking me so many times through football, so I had to overcome myself, achieve self mastery, so that I can go on and teach other people how to do the same. That's a bigger mm. purpose, bro. I always felt like towards the end of my career when I kept on getting the injuries and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, football started feeling a bit self serving. Like it was just mm. all about me. Like yeah. I just wanted to get back to the Premier League and I just wanted to get back to a certain level, but you don't really impact people, bro. I never felt like footballers really impact people that much. Mm. And I think I got asked to do this and this was a bigger purpose, something greater than myself. 100%. And just where I would have impacted more people. So I think if I go back to football, bro, God would be pissed. <laughs> but if I could do both, bro, I would de I would definitely yeah. do both. What about like coaching or like in a manager role or something like that? I think, no? nah, I think that's the same. I think it's the same, it's the same thing, it's yeah? Same thing. Football, and it's just football. longer hours, it's more stress. Yeah, yeah. It's more, it's more fragile than a football career. You can be sacked in, in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no. Whereas with football yeah. is a bit different. Football, like if you're not playing as good, they can just bench you. They'll put you in reserve. Yeah, you got a contract. You got a contract, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get sacked, bro. In a week. <laughs> Fans kick up a fuss yeah. because they fucking, you had one bad game and yeah. then that fickle and you're just done. Well, that must be crazy on, the, on their mental as well. Like, yeah, one bad game, it could all be over. Whereas yeah, in football, bro. it's different, isn't it? Like you have a bad game, bounce back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. That, that, that's, that's the one thing that I didn't like. That's why I really started gravitating toward business, yeah, because mm. football, when I started obviously getting the injuries as well, and even before that, football is so fragile and there's so many variables to it. Mm. It's really frustrating for someone like me who's really controlling. Like, I, I need to be in control. I like control. Yeah. And when I feel like I'm just being, like, dragged around everywhere, mm. it's, like, super frustrating. And that's the benefits of business. Like, mm. the, you have a lot more variables that you can control. Yeah. Like, you can't... In business, the only way for your business to really get put at a standstill is for you to like die <laughs> or be on a hospital bed. And even mm. on a hospital bed, you can you, got you can maneuver it in a certain way yeah, yeah. where your business still progresses. Like you can just hire, you might have a partner, you might mm. you can just hire someone. You can just position it in a way where you can continue to grow and move it forward. Football, bro, you get an injury for six months. Your career is at a standstill for six months. Yeah. yeah. And if a manager comes in that don't like you and he puts you on the bench for six months, your career is at a standstill for six months. Yeah, it's just like now you can do it. Like. Also, you do, you could don't really control like where you play and stuff like that as well. Like, um, let's say you want to play a different position or you want to play a different style. It's yeah, your manager it's choosing, you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You could be a striker, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Gaffer's like, bro, you're playing right back today. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, safe. So. What's what's yeah. the biggest contract you've had in football? Biggest contract? Yeah. How do you mean, like term? Like, money. Oh, money. Yeah. Uh, money is my whole contract. It's like 17 k a week at Hull. I went from I went from Liverpool to Hull. Was that your biggest? Yeah. That was my biggest year. Yeah. Who would you say is the like the biggest name that you played with? Played with? So on the pitch with? Well, I played against Messi. So that was, that's the Messi. biggest one against him, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Salah, were you there with, when Salah was there? But uh, Yeah. Well, I left that summer. So I trained with him for like three weeks. Okay. Yeah. He came that summer, that preseason, and then I left. So I trained with him three weeks. Then I, I went to Hull. Yeah. I, I know like footballers must have like crazy like fans, fan stories. Have you had any like crazy fan stories? Fan stories, bro, a bunch of them always hit me up on DMs chatting shit, bro. <laughs> I get that all the time, bro. But now, now I'm free in it, so I can just yeah, say whatever the fuck I want. You must be, you must be getting that bear, like when you were, when you were actual footballer, do you get like bear hate on the DMs and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More on Twitter, bro. Twitter is the worst place. Twitter is yeah, like yeah. the most toxic place. That's where all the fucking drunks and the pubbies go, bro. <laughs> and they just chat shit. They feel like they've got a voice there. So that's, yeah, we're at Liverpool probably the most. Yeah, yeah. Because more in the oh, public. Bro, to be fair, all clubs, bro, I've got it. Hmm. Um, maybe Liverpool the most because because that, that was the biggest. Yeah. But yeah, a lot, a lot, bro. A How lot. do you deal with it then? Like, uh, it, bro, it, do you know what? It never really, it never really affected me like how it affects most. Like, mm. someone will go online and say your shit and make players feel like they're shit. Like, mm. they never make me feel shit, but they used to just piss me off for the fact that they're trying to make me feel shit. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. what used to get on my nerves. It's crazy because sometimes, most of the time, it's your own fans. All the time it's your own fans. Yeah, so it's like, like 95% of it is your own fans. So it's like, if you want to support the team, like surely yeah. you should be uplifting bro, them. Bro, don't, yeah, don't expect any logic from, <laughs> from football fans, bro. They're all stupid as fuck, bro. Like 90% of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now that's crazy. So, yeah. so it, it never like affected you mentally because I was always thinking like, if you had a bad game, like let's say you had a, like your manager shouting at you and stuff. And then, then you go online and you see everyone like taking the piss out of you, putting memes, like, and mentally like, how did you say so it didn't really affect you like negatively or? 
just, it just used to get me, it used to just piss me off. The yeah. fact that they've actually, bro, if someone just said like, if someone said some shit and that hated on me, but didn't tag me, I'll be like, cool, he's just saying his opinion. Yeah, but yeah. he's purposely at my name, bro, so I could see it. Yeah, yeah. That's what's the most annoying thing about it. What he said didn't really get, doesn't really get to me, but it's just the fact that, you know, he's purposely tr trying to get me to see it. So would you say you have like thick skin? Yeah, I'd say I have, I, yeah, I'd say I have thick skin, but I had to build that, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying about it. It's just all self-development. Like you have to develop through that. At Fantastic. the beginning, bro, when I was 16, 17, and I used to get it, yeah. then it used to hurt a lot more. But mm. you had, you, then you just have to develop. It's either you develop or fall out of the game. And I was too obsessed to fall out of the game, so I had to just develop. Definitely. I feel like mentality is like an important part of football, man. Like, I see it all the time. Yeah. When I'm watching football, I'll see like um, people playing mind games with each other on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, this is crazy, man. But yeah, foot, bro, football is, uh, you have to have thick skin, bro. Even like mm. your own players. Even mm. in the changing rooms, like players really know how to push buttons. Yeah. And it can be getting to turn into a real toxic place. It's super, yeah. it's a uh, super competitive. Yeah. Have you got any stories like in the changing room? Oh, my loads, bro. Yeah. Fights <laughs> in the changing room. <laughs> any big names? Any big name fights? Uh, I think my, my, most fights were at Hull, bro. And you yeah. know, there wasn't really many big names there. Um, when I was at Liverpool, bro, Liverpool was very controlled. Like they had okay. some really se good senior pros like Milner, Henderson, mm. Klopp was there. So he never let anything get far. Nothing they're more far. professional, yeah? They're very professional. Yeah, okay. very professional. There was no egos at that yeah. at that point. So, the, yeah, no real... People always ask me for crazy stories at Liverpool. I'm like, there weren't really any, bro. Yeah, like yeah. it was a very controlled environment. It was very professional. Everyone was very level-headed. So nothing really, you know, kicked off. There's obviously arguments mm. in the change rooms, but I never really went, went too far. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, it's a bit disappointing <laughs> not to have the stories there, but yeah. that's just how it was, man. What about Hull and that? Like any, any other, any like stories at Hull? Uh, you probably, there's just, there was a lot of fights at Hull. Fights, There was yeah, a lot yeah. of fights, yeah, yeah. Just like in the change rooms, after games, because it was, it got toxic because we was always losing, was always in a relegation battle. So the, everyone plays a blame game. Yeah. Everyone gets blamed for different shit. No one wanted to take accountability. So naturally there was just a lot of fights. Um, I'm trying to think of black Blackpool was cool. Yeah, Hull was probably Hull was probably uh, probably had the most like scraps and fights. The most, yeah, all right. But bro, it, I feel like things calmed down in football, and things got. I, I don't know whether like whether it's because people were in trouble more, or maybe it's because of social media and the news gets out more. But how things were, maybe like ten years ago, hmm. and before that would have been a lot crazier. I feel like it's settled down a lot. People are a lot more chilled now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe because people are just getting in trouble constantly, but. Do you think it's the, because I, I hear a lot of leaks as well. Who, who do you reckon, how do you reckon people get like leaks? Is it, do you reckon it's the players that. Leak, what do you mean? So like, you know, like, you, you know, like Romano, people like that. Like I hear, I hear like, you know, locker room, like fights, like it gets leaked out. How do you, how do you. Oh, how, leaks? Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. It's no, all, no, it's no, not in the roof. All the, <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> no, I thought you said leaks. I thought you said leaks. Bro, do you know what it is? It's all the nerds that work upstairs, bro. All the is admin it? guys that probably hear it and so they tell their friends. Everyone. Yeah, man, oh, it's, all, it's yeah. always them. So like footballers will tell their other footballers, but to get outside the press and that, it's just all the nerds that work upstairs. Because especially at United, like, I always hear like, like things are getting leaked. Like, okay, someone had an argument. I'm like, how the hell did like, how are things like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then you, you got to think as well, like most of the time there's photographers there, oh, yeah, videographers, yeah, yeah. there's journalists. They, they're always at the training ground watching oh, training yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So it's not hard. Yeah, yeah, so so you'd say would you say that thick ment uh, the thick skin and that mentality that helped you like go into self development? Yeah, bro, it just forced you to forced mm. you to like you, I, the, the amount of times I'd have to go home just broken about a disappointment, yeah. the fact that you know even I played a bad game and other teammates would like would laugh at it. You'd get that constantly, mm. and it, but even the small things that like you'd compete or you play you, you play like a certain game, you played a, a finishing drill and you came last in the finishing drill and you was all nervous. That's why you lost. So he's like, fuck, I can't be nervous next time. Yeah, yeah. It's just, there's so many situations that occurred that just, and when you're a footballer as well and you go home, you have nothing else to do. Yeah. Like there's nothing, you don't work, you don't do anything. Yeah. And most of the time you're away from family. So all you have to do is sit, sit there and dwell on whatever happened that day. So it's just like, you just have to, bro. Or, yeah, so, so or we, you just lose your way. Yeah, so would you say it was like an easy transition then going from uh, football to self-development and coaching? For, uh, it's, just, it's, just a, it's hand in hand, bro. I wouldn't see yeah. two, two separate things. Okay. It's just like, I think self-development goes hand in hand with, with everything. But just the harder it is, the more you're going to need self-development. Like mm -hmm. you're going to need less self-development working at Tesco because it's not really, you don't really face any hardships or real challenges. The yeah. harder something is, 
the, the, obviously the more self-development is required. Would you say the harder something is, the, the better it is for you? The more challenging something Oh yeah, is. for sure. That's what I said, bro. That's what yeah. I said. I don't even, I, I hate speaking in front of people. Like I don't think anyone likes it, mm. but that's why I force myself to go and do it. So would you advise the viewers to do that as well? So let's say the more scary and challenging something is, would you advise them 100%, to do it? 100%, bro. That's how you build confidence. You mm. prove to yourself that you can, you can hold your own in uncomfortable situations. So mm. that just breeds confidence. Uh, well, what kept you motivated throughout your whole career? Bro, motivation was not even a thing for me, bro. I talk oh. about motivation a lot. Like, it's just, I've never ever relied on motivation. I don't recommend anyone to rely on motivation whatsoever. If it comes, great. It's fun when it's there. But you can't rely on it. It's too fleeting. So I was never, I, I, I would always use driven and obsessed. Like, motiva well, motivation is nothing, bro. Motivation is just like a bit what of discipline. You know, yeah, discipline's huge, but if you're obsessed and you're driven, then you're just naturally going to have discipline yeah. because you yeah. want to excel and you know that if you participate in certain habits that are unaligned to where you want to go, then it's not going to work. So you have to be disciplined. That's why I was never a big drinker. I never really used to go out much. I just wasn't on the road. I wasn't doing anything stupid. I was just like, you know, how, how do I perform the best tomorrow? Because mm. I was up every day, right? You, you could say I looked motivated because yeah. I was just driven. People would say I'm motivated. But it was just drive, it was drive, it was obsession. And it was just like, just desperation to to make a name for myself and to have a career as a footballer. Yeah. What time uh, would you say someone should sleep and wake up as well? Like sleep a and wake up. Routine. This is different, bro. This changed a lot. When, I, when If you're a footballer, bro, you, I'd obviously go to bed early and I'll still, I'll, I would now wake up, my, my sleep routine would be different now if I if I played now. Mm. I would definitely go to bed earlier and I would, uh, and I would sleep. I would go to bed earlier and I'd wake up earlier and I'd use more of the mornings to prepare like mentally where before bro, when I used to play, I will just wake up, wake up and then just go straight to training, bro. There'll be no preparation like whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But um, as a football, it's different, bro. I just, I just sleep as, as much as I could. Yeah, I feel like now I don't sleep. I yeah. sleep like, do that like four hours. But if yeah. I'm a footballer, bro, I couldn't do that. I'd have to sleep like eight, nine hours every day. Do you believe in like the energy waves like we were talking about uh, the other day? Yeah, well, that was interesting. Bro. I, didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know about that, but I get it. I do, yeah, I do yeah. get it. And I, I do believe in, in that for sure. Like a lot of things that, 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 that I learn, especially out here from religious people that believe in, believe in stuff like that. Like I, I felt that already without even knowing the scientific mm. meanings behind it. So when you I can, hear it, I'm like, oh shit, that makes sense. You can feel it, yeah. So yeah. I can feel, yeah, I can feel it for, for, uh, for sure. That's why I get up early, bro, because I feel more powerful in the morning. In the when morning, it's like 4 a.m., yeah. I feel way more powerful than when I wake up at 9 a.m. It's completely different. Yeah. I, I, I feel, I feel, um, I feel actually like weak when I wake up at 9 a.m. I feel like the mm. days pass. I feel like, fuck, like I've just lost the, the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like a bum, bro. If I get up at 9 a.m., I feel like a bum. Yeah, so yeah. so you'd rather have a longer day if you wake up in the morning, and you have a longer day? Uh, bro, yeah. So my yeah. day my day today was 4 a.m. And now what time is it now? It's like 10. 10, yeah. So 16 hours. 16 hours. I'm not going to go to bed now until like 11, 30, 12. Then I'm, I'm up at 4 again. So my mm. days are... Long, bro. I feel like you get a head start, isn't it? So if you start up, uh, if you wake up at four and then let's say n normal people wake up about nine, 10. So you've got like that six hour head start. Yeah, that that as well. Yeah. You get, um, you definitely get a head start. But a lot of people would maybe say that they will catch up at night. If I go better, normally I'll try to go better like 10. Yeah. And they will maybe try and catch up 10 to 12, for example. Mm. It's not even like I'm trying to, out compete people in terms of time wise but it's just naturally <laughs> it just is what it is naturally yeah it's just i'm just trying to do the best for me and try and get the most done for me but i know i'm way more productive in the morning than someone would be at night mm. like the product the productivity levels in the morning are way stronger than at night time at night time you're going to be more obliged to put the tv on watch netflix snack Chill, eat some yeah. shit watch something scroll on like scroll on your phone where in the morning those things are those desires are a lot weaker and yeah. they're not really they're not really present in the morning you just feel like doing productive stuff yeah the, so, air, the air feels pure as well it just feels like yeah yeah it's, 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 just, it's just way more powerful bro mm. so, so how would you define success to you then uh for me success is success is, is excelling in all the areas that i feel like are important in life and I think a lot of people get success confused because they narrow it down to one area of just being financially, financially successful. Whereas for me, you've got to be, you've got to be financially successful and you got, to, it, it depends how you make your money as well. So financially successful in a way that you want to make it, that's aligned to your values. 
you got to be, you got to have, health is a massive part. Health is huge. You got to be fit. You got to be healthy because mm. no one, no one wants to have money at, at the um, expense of their health. Doesn't make sense. And family and relationships, bro. Mm. Family relations, having a good family. And the last one that I've that I've added, which is super important, is teaching people how much you're impacting people. Teaching, like how much you're sharing sharing your knowledge. Like, what is the point of acquiring all the things? that you're after if you're not going to teach other people that were in your position once that wanted all the things you have what's the point if you're not going to if you're not going to pass that on definitely it says that in our religion as well like um, our prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he used to teach people so it's a sunnah for us to teach as well well that, well, that was his only real purpose really was it yeah, yeah exactly. people how to, how to live that was yeah. it that's what the, my program's about showing people how to live yeah, yeah how to live the most positive life how to be the most effective how to overcome yourself that that's exactly the same right mm. so um i think people that you know hoard the answers f for me make, it makes no sense and that doesn't that doesn't it, even if someone has the family even if they have the health even if they have the money but they don't share their knowledge for me i, that, I don't deem that person as successful mm. so, so you wouldn't say like money equals success in that area it does not 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 total success no okay but would you, bro, you know how many people make money, bro, that you would not want to trade lives with. Yeah, yeah. That is success. If you wouldn't, if you wouldn't even think about trading lives with them, they're not successful. Yeah, yeah. Would you say it buys happiness then, like money? Bro, I find this question so funny. You know, <laughs> I find it mad funny. Yeah. Because, I don't, bro, like, you can't buy happiness. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even a, a big believer in happiness, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Like the the definition of what people regard as happy isn't even something that I strive for. And, ha and it, it definitely isn't something you can just buy. Like it's not in a fucking jar in Tesco. They'd be like money, happiness. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not, you can't just trade it like that. Cause you hear the quote, uh, I'd rather cry in a Lambo. Yeah, quote. yeah, bro. Yeah, it may, it may, I understand where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. Bro, you can, you can definitely buy it indirectly. You obviously can't buy direct happiness. It doesn't mm. mean that if you're rich and if you have money, you're going to be happy. Mm. That it just doesn't work like that because you can be rich and unhappy. You can, you can, be, you can be rich and unhappy. And you can be poor and happy and the other way around as well, bro. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a, a huge tool in order to, to help you achieve that. I think you're definitely more likely to be happy mm. if you have money, yeah. 100%. Yes, but well, does it buy it directly? Obviously not, because happiness isn't just something that you just buy. Yeah, so but it, it, buy, it, it obviously buys, it indirectly buys the things that could make you happy. Yeah. So if spending more time with your kids makes you happy and you have money, then you're going to have more time to spend time of your kids like simple bro i didn't even get yeah. the, the argument with this like yeah. people like <laughs> mad debate over this yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. simple yes yeah, so, so what makes you happy then what makes me happy uh I, I i for me happiness i replaced that with fulfilled how do i feel fulfilled how do i get to the end of each day feeling fulfilled mm -hmm. and i think that's just doing all the things that i feel like god has set out for me to do and he has a bunch of things that i'm that, that i'm supposed to do and a bunch of things that i'm not supposed to do and i go through every single day doing the things that i'm supposed to do and restraining from all the things that I'm not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I get to the end of the day and I'm fulfilled. So have I have I um, ticked all the boxes? Have I have I done the gym? Have I focused on my health? Have I shown gratitude to him for by looking after my body and going to the gym? Bang, tick that. Have I helped someone? Have I coached? Have I impacted someone on that day? Mm -hmm. Have I spent time with my kids? Have I impacted them? All these things, bro, that, that I need to do on a daily basis. If I do them, if I do them, then I, I feel I feel fulfilled, and I guess that technically means happy for for what other people I guess regard as happy. Definitely, man. So, so, so what's your future plans then? Future plans, bro. Just keep keep pushing it, man. Keep pushing, keep pushing it. it. Yeah. I obviously need to transition myself from from footballer to to coach. Mm. That's obviously a hard thing. One of the bit, one of the hardest things, bro, is transitioning. But that's what I'm very very good at, bro. All my life, I've always been transitioning. I've always been like changing my identity, even yeah. through football, bro. I like I done one of the hardest transitions in football. I went from a fullback playing like under 21s to the first team as a center mid. Like mm. anyone that knows football, that's fucking hard, bro. So and you I went from a fullback to a cent center yeah, mid? Yeah, bro, before Klopp came and gave me my debut, I was a fullback. Your fullback. And I made my debut as a midfielder. That's crazy. So that's hard. That's, midfield is the, the hardest position on the pitch. Yeah, that's a bit like Trent now. I think Trent was a full fullback. Now he's in England. Yeah, but he mid. moved to midfield when he was like already 200 games in yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my fucking debut bro. debut as a, yeah like I, was, I played a, little, a few 21 games before that as a as a, as a center mid and like a short loan spell so how do you deal with that then going changing like positions were oh, you just obsession bro i uh, just watch every midfielder i had to, all the midfielders yeah. that i enjoyed had to watch them i had to watch how they operate so how long did you have like in that time period 
Um, I can't even remember, you know, maybe like six, six, seven months. Oh, six, seven months. Six, seven months yeah. of like playing with the 21s as a midfielder okay. before I ended up making a breakthrough. But six months, bro, I'm playing against midfielders that I played midfield for 25 years. Yeah, exactly. Like probably when they were young, right? And it's, yeah, and it's fresh. And then even when I like wanted to go into business, I had to transition myself and change my identity to a, like a property investor for a while to really understand that and get involved now as quickly as possible. Then I just struck two deals. So all my life where I've been, I've always been in transitioning. Transitioning, yeah. Now I'm like transitioning to, into a coach, someone that speaks to camera like immediately. Like I didn't have to, I didn't even build up. I just opened my fucking phone up, bro. They never yeah. seen my face before. <laughs> Bang, just straight into it. Mm-hmm. So um, like I said, bro, that just, that, I think that comes from just self-development as well. Being able to be courageous enough to to transition. Like transition scary, man. Not mm-hmm. a lot of people even like that. Yeah, that's decent, man. You also mentioned you got, you got a course coming, was it? A course? Co- no, no, no course. No courses, no. Course. Okay. Yeah, everything's just, all just, my online, courses, co- just online, online coaching. Online, yeah? online courses, bro. And it's the same, but the, the course will never change. Because yeah, yeah. It's, it's all the things that I do and done to overcome, that will never change because they, they work. Yeah. It's what I've learned from myself, from fucking from books, from other mentors. Yeah. And it's just a set thing. That's a daily, bru- uh, daily blueprint, habits, certain mindset frameworks that are just effective to overcome like any internal issues and they will just stay the same. Yeah. It, it doesn't even need to be changed. Yeah, and you'd say you've got, uh, you said you've got Instagram, you've got Twitter. Inter- uh, Inter- Instagram's probably the only one worth shouting Instagram. really, right? That's, the, that's where I'm most active. And what was that again, sorry? Uh, Kev Stewart 93. Kev Stewart. Make sure you follow him, guys. Make sure you follow us, subscribe to Cashflow Convos. And I think that's it. That's a wrap, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, man. That's Ooh. a wrap, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Appreciate, appreciate having me, man. Yeah. 100%. And, part uh, two in the UK, bro. Part two in the UK, man. Look forward to it. So, guys, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Take care.